Hello, I'm Sandra Sutov and the Technical Director of CartoonG. Hello, my name is Sylvie de la Borderie and I'm a GIS and IT project manager. Hello, my name is Elsa Raunio and I am a GIS project manager at CartoonG. Hello, my name is Paula Fava and I am product owner at CartoonG. And together we will take you through our lightning talk on how you need to decide for a custom versus a off-the-shelf tool. Enjoy! Dazzling data dashboards, yes please, but at what? So we're going to talk you through the type of questions that you might have to ask type of dashboards that are there and also give you some pointers on how to take a decision. There are a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself and they might have a different weight depending on where you're coming from but one question that you really need to ask is what is a tool already available that you need to use? Who are your end users and what are their skills and what type of internet connection quality do you actually have? and the type of features that you need. So different type of dashboards. Uh, we classified them here according to what functions that you need. Uh, obviously, there is the offline one, an Excel dashboard, and there are different off-the-shelf tools as well. And you might need them to be in the cloud and you might need them to actually upload data or even to edit data as well. And same with the custom dashboards. You might need all those functions or just some of it. So let's have a look at the best use cases. For the Excel dashboard that's meant to run offline, this is for a sector specialists that actually need reporting and where the reporting needs to be standardized uh, and a way for them to upload their survey data or other data that they are collecting and they can use it for displaying various indicators. The advantages, of course, the main one is that it works offline and then it's also ideal for basic knows Excel, so uh, it's actually easy to use for them. The downside is not everyone is using the same Excel versions, and in order to make this work, in, uh, Excel needs to contain macros as well, and, to, and they don't always perform the same on, on all of the different PCs. The performance can also come in as a problem as your data set grows larger and the more elements that you need to use and show. The best use case for the Excel dashboard is obviously a standalone single user uh, use case and um, when you need it for standardized reporting and offline usage. For Power BI, a little bit related to Excel, there you can actually use it in the cloud as well. And you can also use it for a public user if you need to. Here is an example that we've uh, developed for UNHCR um, sense nutritionists, survey managers, uh, showing different type of indicators. The advantage is it's quite pleasing. You have uh, a large catalog to choose from. You can also use it as internal capacity building for them to learn on how to use it. And it can also be connected to different data sources. However, if you have a complicated database behind with many indicators, you could actually be pushing it very quickly to its limits. Also, maps can only be used with workarounds, especially when you need to publish them. And filtering could be limited as well, especially on the maps. So the best use case for Power BI is, again, uh, um, a standalone and single user case where you could train your users. Or if you're publishing it or using com with complex databases, you need to have someone internally who can support on the topic. And then when you actually need to create your very own dashboard with the data that you control and read in as you need it. All right, and over to Elsa. ArcGIS dashboard. If you have already ArcGIS uh, subscription with the uh, license type creator or higher, you will have automatic access to this uh, dashboard tool, which is very easy, intuitive, yet effective uh, tool for creating interactive uh, online dashboard. And these are examples from the Carto NG portfolio with the UNHER and uh, MSF. And, uh, when the, once the data is collected, it's automatically synchronized, updated on the dashboards. And uh, with the fast uh, setup, everything is already in one place without any additional add-on licenses needed. 
However, the downsides include uh, widget options, uh, chart options are not that broad, uh, and also all the interconnections between the zoom and filter elements must be manually set up. And it's not very suitable for low bandwidth contexts or for uh, users uh, wanting to use, for example, on their mobile phones. Also, connecting to external data sources can be challenging. So if we think about an ideal user case, uh, it's uh, when the data is being collected and managed through S3 technologies, when we would like to monitor spatial theaters, and when there is a really need for a very quick and urgent setup rather than a fancy layout. Then the ArcGIS uh, Online provides another tool, which is ArcGIS Web App Builder and the dashboard layout. And, uh, this is uh, much more versatile than the dashboard tool in the sense that there are, for example, many more data visualization options both uh, inside and outside of the map. And also many, many widget options that can be utilized in the dashboard. And uh, this sample is from the 2019 uh, mission to Ethiopia with the UNHCR. And if we look at the pros and cons of this tool, among the uh, pros uh, is this auto update and synchronization, broad range of widgets uh, and uh, visualization options. You can, for example, add buffer analysis, distance intersect, etc. on your map. And also you can add widgets so that the users can edit or add the data to the map. But there are also certain disadvantages, including it's not uh, as easy to set up as the dashboard, and especially the map element must be very carefully set up before proceeding to configure the dashboard. And it may take longer time to learn to use than the dashboard tool. So also when connected to, to a large data sets, this app may perform rather slowly. The ideal user case is definitely when there is a need for a very map-centered dashboard with visualization both inside and outside of the map and especially if there is a need for spatial analysis on the map and when the user should be able to add or edit, or edit the data in the map. Over to Paula on a custom dashboard. Yeah, custom dashboard, in this case we are showing an example of a custom application developed by Carter and Jet for UNHCR and it's called the site mapping. Users are a GIS specialists or information management specialists, desk officers who have the need to display data regarding uh, refugee camps and settlements. In, uh, it's an interactive map where the user can select which feature to display and mm, where to display them. It's an application that has been several pros related to the fact that uh, there are many possibilities for enabling future functions and features and the design and the style can be totally customized. Then uh, we have uh, the possibility to use, uh, use scripts that are specifically developed to run automatic analysis and extract specific information from the application. It's uh, visually pleasing. Uh, it's also scalable and uh, replicable. The, um, the advantage of the custom dashboard is that it can be developed with the latest technologies and uh, therefore also improving the performance and the speed of the application. On the other side, uh, as a cons, uh, we had that, uh, of course, you need uh, web developers to set it up and um, develop at the start, as well as to make uh, modifications. It also can be based on the amount of uh, customized uh, features and the details. It can take quite uh, a bit of time to, to set it up and develop it. We can say so that uh, the best use case for this type of uh, custom dashboard is when we have a, a large amount of GIS data, also coming from uh, external uh, sources or multiple sources. When we have, for example, the need to do some um, specific uh, analysis, uh, on the geographical data, as well when we want to replicate the application to different contexts. Uh, also, the possibility to run calculation through a doc script are some of the best use cases for this type of custom dashboard. Over to Sylvie now. Another example of a custom uh, dashboard is the MSF map application that Carto NG developed for MSF some years ago. 
So this dashboard is for a large audience, all MSF staff. It's an interactive one. It contains a lot of advanced and uh, complex features, such as editing the data for the end user, drawing on a map, or customize the printing functions. The advantages of this dashboard is that you can uh, really fit to the official branding of your organization. You can connect all of the uh, different sources and different users can edit the data. You can also edit the data through your internal organizational tools, such as SharePoint, for instance. And the main aspect is that using this new and last web technology, it, it uh, gives a fast performance. On the other side, of course, you need a web development skill to develop such a you also need uh, to design clearly your, your data and your requirement at the beginning of the, of the development. In terms of budget and time, of course, it will take a bit more time to develop the tool if we compare to the others that uh, we presented. In terms of budget, we can say that more customized feature you need, uh, higher budget you will spend. So the best use case for this advanced custom dashboard, it's when you have to connect uh, multiple data sets and you want uh, your end user to be able to edit the data through different way. Also, you take attention to have this dashboard tailor-made for your organization. If you think that your dashboard will evolve, it's also a good use case because you can add additional features along the way. The fast performance is a high priority for you, so it will be also the best use case to use this custom dashboard. So, in conclusion, how to take a decision now that you've seen a lot of tools? So, we uh, try to draw this decision uh, tree where you can see the main questions that you will need to ask yourself and to answer. As you can see, we didn't put the budget and the time in this decision tree, as it can, of course, balance your choice, but it will not come as first as we, we can imagine. Also, uh, when you do a choice, it doesn't mean that it will be your final choice. Uh, as your needs will grow or evolve, you can also start by using first uh, easy to use dashboard and then end by a customized dashboard. So as an example, we did uh, this process this year for the COVID crisis with MSF. So we started to build an ArcGIS dashboard. Uh, it was ready in a few days since we need it for the emergency context. And then as our need change, we had more and more users and more and more editor. We need to move to a customized dashboard. We noticed that WHO did the same approach. They started for the COVID crisis, a dashboard using RGIS tools, and then they moved to a customized dashboard a few weeks after the first response. So thank you very much for your time and interest and in listening to our uh, lightning talk. And we are now ready to take your questions.